Okay folks, welcome to my new video presentation of the 80 meter band variable frequency oscillator or VFO for short which will be used as part of my practical assessment for the amateur radio intermediate exam. This handy piece of bench testing equipment was purchased from a Mr Colin Tockley G8TMV who has very kindly collected together all relevant parts and components in order to assist candidates such as myself in training for their intermediate license. It arrives in kit form ready to assemble and solder and costs in the region of about £11 delivered. A website links included with the kit for a step-by-step -step, clear to understand list of instructions on how to assemble and test the VFO. Credit also goes to Mr Steve Hartley G0FUW for helping with the improved circuit design and to the Cambridge and District Amateur Radio Club who backed the project. Okay, now on with uh, demonstrating this handy little beauty in action. I'm not a complete stranger to kit building, but have to admit that this build was relatively simple, so it shouldn't be a great concern to anyone with ba basic soldering skills. Assembling the kit went well, but I had a rather confusing half an hour when it came to attaching a battery and listening out for the generated signal on my home base receiver. I turned the dial around the 3.5 MHz area and heard nothing, not a jot. After much scratching of the head and a couple more checks to ensure I had assembled it correctly, I decided to wind the Realistics VFO further down the band to see if I could find and hear anything. <clears throat> Lo and behold, there it was, nicely oscillating around 3.168 MHz, much lower than I had expected it to be. So then came the moment of working out exactly how to tune it up to the required frequency of 3.5 MHz. This is where my gratitude for having such a kind and thoughtful wife comes in because only a couple of days ago she bought me a pack of various size ceramic screwdrivers. I'll just put them in front of the camera to see. There you go. Real handy things to have in the shack. Uh, it's just a job for adjusting the trimmer on the VFO. I've got to be honest, I was quite surprised at how sensitive the trimmer was. It only took a very small tweak to bring it above and beyond 3.5 MHz, so I had to keep very carefully adjusting it until I got it as near as possible to where it needed to be. Final adjustments were made with the two small trimmers on the back of the polybari gun, or more commonly known as the tuning capacitor. So here we have it, nicely calibrated to include the 80 meter band, starting at the bottom at 3.5 MHz, um, working all the way up to 3.8 with two additional settings in between, the 3.6, 3.7, right up to the 3.8. Uh, the tuning capacitor actually goes beyond 3.8, but I've marked that as the cutoff point. It goes down to about, I don't know, 3.82, something like that. But you'd have to be careful not to go out of the band with that. That's why I've set it to 3.8. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I'll give you a bit of a demonstration on that now. So if we turn it up. It's very, very sensitive to heat. There we go. I've actually tuned in the fine tuner as well. I'll show you that a demonstration of that in a second. So there we go, 3.5 for zero beat. If we go up, okay. There we have it. You just fine tune it in. Okay. Turn it to 3.6. Put it somewhere around there, and then tune your tune your receiver up to 3.6. Should be somewhere in the region of that. There you go. Very very fine. But like I say, if you want to use the fine tune, that works just as well. Get it bang on zero beat there. Um, next one, 3.7. Tune it round to just about spot on. Oh, 
I find tunes a godsend. <coughs> it's a godsend because that's very, very sensitive. So let's get it crack on with that one. Just to show it. Bang on zero beat again, 3.7. And if we go to the upper end of the scale at 3.5, can't quite see. Can't quite see, but it's somewhere around there. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Bingo. There we go. Spot on, guys. I've blue tapped this down a bit um, so that I could operate it. So, what I'll do, I'll pick the camera up in a second. I'll show you the um, circuitry at the back. Um, it's also worth pointing out how sensitive these VFOs are and how they can change frequency due to a change in temperature or vibration slowly blowing across the inductor can send it out of tune um, listen to this just turn it up a little bit so the camera can hear you listening and that's just a small bit of blowing a bit of fresh air just touching the can't see. That's how sensitive they are to vibration and whatnot. Bring it, fine tune it back into zero, zero beat quite easily with that now that that's attached as well. Okay, um, right, I'll just pick the camera up and show you the back of the circuitry if I can. You just have to be, bear, bear with me a minute, it's an iPad so it's quite bulky. So I'm hoping, hoping we'll be able to see. See the bits and bobs of how it's so constructed. This might be upside down actually, just a second. Nope, can't quite get in that way, so you'll have to bear with us and just see see from that angle. And that's the main trimmer that I use to bring it from uh, 3.165, 168, right up into the 80 meter band. And then the two small screws on the back of that um, tuning capacitor, two little brass screws there, they're the ones that can fine tune it so it's bang on. And I say this is your inductor that if you touch it or blow across this, this will change frequency quite easily. So just listen once more. Send it out just a second. That's it. That's how sensitive they are. So, once more. That was just blowing across the inductor again. So, right, okay, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's given you a bit of an insight into these VFO kits and how they work. Um, enjoy. Enjoy your kit building and best of luck if you're taking the intermediate exam. So, best seven threes from Kev M6 KS. <laughs>